Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucians are called upon to maintain COVID-19 protocols as the ban on sale of alcohol is lifted. Donations keep pouring in as part of the National COVID-19 Response Telethon and celebrating the island's latest centenarian. As of Friday, 8th May 2020, the government of St. Lucia reinstated liquor licenses in St. Lucia for sale of alcoholic beverages. This measure allows for the sale of alcohol by only licensed businesses from the list of approved businesses that are currently permitted to operate under statutory instrument 56 of 2020, namely supermarkets, minimarts, small grocery shops, wholesalers, and gas stations. The Substance Abuse Advisory Council Secretariat Concerned about binge drinking has advised the public to be mindful of substance use and misuse, especially with the highly celebrated Mother's Day on Sunday, 10th May. Coordinator at the Substance Abuse Advisory Council Secretariat, Chairman Hippolyte Emmanuel, indicated that the harmful consequences of substance misuse are not only experienced by users, but also their family and by extension the community. Persons are encouraged to be mindful of use so that exposure to smoking, alcohol consumption, and other substance use can be minimized and, if possible, eradicated. The harmful consequences of substance use and misuse, including alcohol, pose harm both on one's physical and social health. It creates a means of depleting the existing health resources and also social issues like domestic violence and child maltreatment and abuse. Exposure to substance abuse further places vulnerable groups in a more susceptible position, thus compromising their immune system. The coordinator reminded the public of a popular slogan, Be Bright, Don't Light, and she urged persons to be mindful that substance use and misuse will further complicate the existing situation. The Department of Health and Wellness encouraged persons to take this opportunity to bond with family and take greater measures to remain safe by following the hygiene guidelines, the use of the 311 number for additional support and services, and the other toll-free numbers being circulated on social media. Donations keep pouring in as part of the National COVID-19 Response Telethon. On Friday, 8th May, Desert Star Holdings Limited, DSH, and the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club made a donation of $212,031. Chief Operating Officer of the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club, Ben Walden, and DSH's Project Director, Chi Chow, made the presentation. We're just uh, very glad that we could uh, play a part in uh, helping the government in initiative in, in, the, in this effort in containing this, uh, this uh, coronavirus. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's certainly a... a you know, ex extraordinary times, uh, livelihoods are ex affected. And as a company, we've been here over five years now, and um, and we are very much a part of the community, and uh, we'd we just like to play a part uh, in, in helping the government's effort. I'm new to the island, uh, but in just four months, I've grown to see her beauty and her uh, incredible attributes, both in her people and the island. Uh, the Royal St. Lucia Turf Club is, looks forward to a great future here, and it's a privilege to be here and in a position to help in a small way. Chairman of the COVID-19 Response Telephone Committee and Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries Honorable Dominic Fede expressed gratitude for the donation, citing that it will go a long way in aiding St. Lucia in its fight against COVID-19. We had an outpouring of uh, private sector support, which meant that we raised um, somewhere in the region of about 2.5 million uh, Eastern Caribbean dollars. Our GoFundMe page is still uh, in activation, and last time I checked, it was over 70,000 US dollars. And people are still giving and donating, and the uh, crisis has really mobilized uh, and brought out the best of St. Lucia. Uh, where the big companies, small companies, private individuals, uh, St. Lucians in the diaspora. It's been an incredible um, outpouring of well wishes and support. 
Executive Director of the National Community Foundation, NCF, Michelle Phillips, expressed gratitude for the generosity. On behalf of the eight-member committee chaired by Mr. Minister himself, I want to thank everybody who has donated to the National Response Telethon. To date, we have collected um, approximately 1.8 million. As you know, when you go into a telethon, you get pledges, but the proof of the pudding is always in the eating, and collection is always the process that actually shows the support. And we're doing very well, so we want to say thank you. We want to also con um, ask you to continue pledging. The pledging platforms are open. Our Go GoFundMe um, pledge platform will close on the 12th of May. You can continue to pledge at Bank of St. Lucia to account number 1045-11121. And if you're sending a wire transfer, you can use the SWIFT code BOSL. LC, LC. Again, thank you to everybody. Continue to pledge. And I just want to say thank you to the frontliners and everybody who has been helping in this fight against COVID. Thank you. Executive Director of the National Community Foundation, Michelle Phillips. Bank of St. Lucia has partnered with the OECS Commission in its efforts to ensure member states are adequately prepared for the adverse effects of COVID-19. We get the details in this report. The details of the financial contribution of Bank of St. Lucia was announced by the OECS Director General, Dr. Didacus Jules. The OECS Commission applauds the contribution of U.S. $40,000 from the Bank of St. Lucia towards the purchase of ventilators. The Director General issued calls recently for private sector support in the fight against COVID-19 and Bank of St. Lucia, through its Acting Managing Director, Medford Francis, responded positively. As a good corporate citizen, we felt it was our obligation to make this commitment to the humanitarian effort that is needed at this time. Mr. Francis says the bank does not only have an obligation to respond to any crisis impacting its clients, but also has a responsibility to the people of the OECS. We have to do more to protect our people, and hence our support to the acquisition of ventilators for the public health system. It is because we really want to ensure that once we have overcome this virus, our workforce is intact and is physically, mentally, and emotionally able to undertake the tremendous economic recovery effort that would be required. The OECS Commission has decades of experience in procuring pharmaceutical supplies for member states. This advantage is now helping to fast track the sourcing of vitally needed medical equipment. We are now in a race against time and global demand to ensure that vital equipment such as testing equipment and reagents, ventilators and personal protective equipment for medical as well as police frontliners are brought in as quickly as we can. The 40,000 US dollars donated by Bank of St. Lucia will go towards the purchase of ventilators critically needed in mitigating the impact of the coronavirus in the OECS. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The e-learning approach adopted by the Ministry of Education as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic is taking shape with students, teachers and parents becoming more comfortable with the medium. Paris Anissia Antoine. Due to the profound changes in social interaction and organization caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the education system has adopted the e-learning approach to ensure the continuation of instruction during the absence of normal classes. Various online learning platforms such as Edmodo and Google Classrooms are currently being utilized to hold virtual classes as well as share information and instruction. Principal of the Carmen Rennie Memorial School, Sian Anoli George, explained that the flexibility to use various platforms has allowed teachers to use the more suited and convenient platform for their students. The principal gave insights as to what the transition has been like for the parents, teachers, and students of the school. The fact that teachers do not feel pressured to do or to engage in a platform that they're not comfortable with, it gave us more leverage to be able to work with our students within whatever context is available. And like I said, it had its challenges 
first and foremost, we had to put in a database so that we can contact our parents because most of our information is more or less on um, paper and it means that we had to transfer to an online database to be able to retrieve our parents' email addresses and contact information and to let them know what our plans are as a school in terms of moving forward. And this helped significantly and I must say that is a plus for the whole transition because this is something that we've been wanting to do for a very long time. And so having that database, it means that we can correspond with our parents directly. Amanda Jabatis, teacher of the Carmen Rene Memorial School, explained the manner in which she utilizes the various platforms on a day-to-day -day basis to effectively communicate and engage with students. I have um, Zoom classes at 9 a.m. on weekdays. Um, at these classes, I present a lesson in my area of specialization, which are mathematics, social studies, and study skills. Um, in these classes, I use resources from the internet. I'm using the screen share feature. I also use videos to introduce the lesson and just as a warm-up exercise. And I also use another feature, which is the whiteboard feature. Although Zoom has a whiteboard feature, I use um, Jam, Google Jam. Jamboard because it has other features. For example, I could uh, upload videos from the internet. I could also use the different um, slides to include examples, especially in the mathematics. Kyrida Lionel, a student of the Carmen Rennie Memorial School, spoke on her experience with online learning. The quizzes are quite challenging, but I, I think that I've done all of them so far. All right, so how did you learn to use the various um, softwares like Zoom and Edmundo? How did you learn to use it? Um, I, the teacher told us about how, you, how to use it and I just learned a little more by clicking unnecessary buttons. <laughs> how are your parents helping you now? Well, I don't really need help from my parents since I'm really good with working, but sometimes I would ask them for help when I'm confused about certain questions. The Ministry of Education officials encouraged the students to remain committed to their online classes and assignments. On behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia, the Elder Care Unit of the Division of Human Services has extended special birthday greetings to the island's latest centenarian, Ms. Rachel Stanislas, affectionately known as Tease of Decretus Schuzel. Ms. Stanislas was born on the 8th of May 1920. During her lifetime, Tease created many beautiful memories and notable accomplishments, including her fondness for telling Creole jokes. At age 80, Tease was still climbing trees to get her ackee, plums and other produce to ply her trade as a local market vendor. She is the mother of 12 children, 11 boys and one girl, nine of whom are alive today. At 100 years old, Tease still enjoys spectacular vision and continues to assert some level of independence within her home. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novel of We All. Wash them right with soap and lots of water. Get between fingers, get under the nails, go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Novel, a Creole. Monsieur Tarjanel, Monsieur Madame Department of Kinivas Cosability, with formation and gouvernement cette ici, ça c'est GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, Caposito Novel, a Creole. Présente Primus Hutchinson. Ministre des Affaires Santé, Honorable Marie Isaac, déclaré Jaotei, 
pour qui se travaille à ce bateau touristique. Il a retourné à cette ici après ces qualités et efforts qui fait pour faire ça en réalité. 219, se travaille à bateau touristique, hors de cette ici, à tous les pays, vendredi bon matin, à bon bateau touristique Carnival Glory et Caribbean Princess. Selon Madame Isaac, en l'eau, par an, avec la famille, qui a apprécié l'initiative de ça, et même si se travaille à Pakaï, aller en cas immédiatement, soulagement de ces vêtements-là, c'est yo en cette ici à présent. Dans un bon bâtiment pour deux mois, Kale. Et puis nous avons fait tout ça nous paye pour ça mener ces gens à la venir à cette liste. Ils ne sont pas aisés, mais ils sont bagay ka marché. Si ces gens là ont commencé à arriver ici, bon matin, nous avons un touriste qui a dit dans le bar, qui a l'adjé les gens, et puis nous avons l'autre qui a plus de fonds dans la mer, qui a l'adjé la reste de la nous avons ça mené pour actuellement. Les gens qui sont venus, nous avons mené au douet à les quarantine. Donc so, les êtres ne pas si poser paix, nous avons pris toute marche pour nous ça si oui, dat ki tout moun, tout moun se tout le monde, tout le monde s'est laissé. C'est pour ça que ça a dit que c'est malade. C'est pour ça que ça n'a pas malade. Ça nous savons que c'est pas malade. Mais nous avons testé, nous avons regardé, nous avons monitoré, et puis si, um, nous avons regardé, les après 14 jours, nous savons que nous avons donné la gestion de ces gens. C'est travailler. Le bateau touristique, c'est le ciel, a tué en quarantaine et qui est là pour 14 jours pour faire assurer qu'il n'y a pas souffert. Et bien, il n'y a pas qu'à souffrir et puis maladie, corona. Annoncement, j'ai fait pour faire public la savoir que le gouvernement a fait possible pour l'année vote alcool à payer à accord. La décision a été faite pour suspendre les sens à résultat des confus pour protection de la maladie corona. Le ministre des Affaires, du Commerce et Affaires des Consommateurs, Honor Bradley Félix, fait comprendre que ces places de business qui étaient déjà ouvertes, qui ont une permission pour vendre un homme. Mais ça ne veut pas dire que le public a fait un homme qui va être n'importe de côté. Il explique que ce qui est fait à la base, c'est que bien sûr, il y a des gens qui ont acheté et qui ont allé à la pour boire, mais pas pour boire en public. Donc, so, toute place qui a ouvert, et qui te kavan ou et qui te doubout yo kabou ou homme, c'est même ces places là qui kaisa van ou homme là. So le, SA la te passe, dans les combien de places là qui te nous dit, ou zot pas ça ouvert. Quand tout ti kabou ou, tout ti ba nou ni l'occasion ou en pays ya, yo te ha fermi. Mais ces places là, Machin dis là, comme un supermarket là, gas station là, mini mat là, la manufacturing, tu n'as jamais fait, mais puis dis là, c'est qu'à faire alcool là. Oui. Donc, ces places là, pas jamais fermé. Donc, tout ça nous dit, ces places là, actuellement, actuellement, c'est ça va. Ok. Et que tout le monde, les ouvres, c'est à l'écaillou. C'est à l'écaillou, c'est à l'écaillou, c'est à l'écaillou. Et que le plus important en tout ça, c'est pour dire que Boué responsable. Nous rappelons, j'ai sorti, pour que le pays prenne bonne précaution à mon avis, il a servi alcool. Comme le gouvernement, j'ai laissé Bouid qui était à son licence pour vendre nos hommes. Il y a une discussion à la télévision NTN face au public. Directeur des laboratoires CS Forensic, Mme Fernand Henry, fait comprendre le danger qui s'est apporté pour les gens qui sont à toucher et qui ont à l'alcool. Selon Mme Henry, un peu les enfants, les vieux qui ont des parents qui ont des alcool, mais qui ont dit que ces enfants-là ne pas bon pour eux et pour eux, ils ont des Le directeur a dit que ça n'est pas un bon exemple, pièce de bonne main. Tout ce qui est bon, pas bon nous ne pouvons pas faire des choses comme ça. Nous ne pouvons pas respecter les TMI, nous ne pouvons pas faire des choses comme ça. Les gens qui ont des grands gens, c'est les gens qui ont fait ces décisions. Oui, si ils voulaient boire. Donc, nous ne sommes pas pour faire des choses qui ou ni pour boire pour prendre un bon temps. Donc, c'est ça. Moi, je crois que pour ces jeunesses-là, nous avons fait des choses qui ont fait des choses qui ont fait des choses. Tout ce bagage ça a commencé là yo petit. Mamsel Johan Joseph, qui est un consultant agence comptabilisme alcool, qui a conseillé public là 
pour ne pas faire de course pour acheter de l'alcool. Quand le gouvernement a permission pour les gens acheter de l'alcool après ça, Mme Joseph fait comprendre que c'est pour le public là pour une bonne précaution. Il n'y a pas de système yo, et puis trop d'alcool qui a détruit et qui a plus de plus risques pour la maladie de la corona. On nous tient un système là en bonne condition. Même si nous avons nous ouvert, le gouvernement a ouvert, c'est pour nous prendre, pour nous tient un um, um, contrôle à tout ça pour bien nous, pour la famille nous, pour tout ce monde là au Liban nous. Donc, oui. so, si vous avez bon, vous avez bon, l'éditeur. Et vous avez pris une pause, et peut-être que vous avez bon, vous Mais le problème là, nous ni déjà. En chaque de nous, Kabwele nous assise pour boire ses sec 6, 7, 8. Oui. Nous pas ni pour faire ça, pour c'est pour nous pas faire ça, ça qui est détruit, quand nous et mettez nous en pli, ah you say risk risk, ah, oui. pour jouer un vermin là oui, et oui. pour pour si si pour nous pour nous jouer et si nous jouer un vermin là pour nous am um, am um, pli bah, malade oui. et ni am um, am um, am um, besoin am um, respirateur et, et pour nous joindre um, pour nous um, venir plus malade et um, vermine là. Oh. Et monsieur madame ça c'est côté nous toi votre nouvelle nous aujourd'hui moi quand merci autre pour garder mon cavité au prochain puis moi considérer quand ça veut la vie dans pas sur l'autre nouvelle à créole. Tu me souhaite tout le monde un bon finis ma semaine et que vous savez que nous nous un programme nouveau qui va venir côté nous qui réfléchir à ce ces ces nouvelles là qui passé à ce à ce maintenant. Ça va venir tout de suite. Western des côtes. À présent, je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon fin de semaine et pour passer au bail. Janel. Merci, Appel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. before repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janel Norville.